The heavy use of illicit drugs by armed bandits and kidnappers is one of the reasons the war in Nigeria's northwest is still ravaging. The frequent use and abuse of illicit drugs account for the ruthlessness of their attacks on innocent persons, especially travelers. Suppliers of drugs to bandits have continued to devise new ways of beating security checks and are also finding new smuggling routes, some of which are controlled by the bandits. The Zamfara state government has devised new security measures to curb banditry and other heinous crimes. These include shutting down of some major routes used by the bandits and kidnappers. And it's yielding results with the state anti thuggery committee recently intercepting a vehicle loaded with hard drugs and other items. The items were meant to be delivered to bandits along the Sado Magami Wenke Road, which is also one of the routes shut down by the state government. Three suspects were arrested in connection with the crime and their operational vehicle confiscated. About 12 to 1 o'clock there about, we arrested uh, this gentleman with a uh, golf. Front of the golf, there were gunshots in his bonnet. We are able to recover some substance. We caught them with about 100 impact and uh, MP, MP3 and other uh, uh, drugs, tablets that energize their body. So we know they are taking it to, to the bandit. We discover that there are some ops and also there are some concussion of uh, Bukura that contains what is called tetrahydro cannabinol. The Kurkura is a solution. It contains cannabis cannabinol. And in some cases, it was found to contain tramadol. So all these are psychotropic substances that can alter the mind that is the of the mind. With a warning from the National Emergency Management Agency months ago, Arrangements have been in top gear to prepare for the yearly flood in Bayasa State. But the hope of a repeat of last year's mild occurrence has left many in shock over the massive increase in flood water in the past few days. Some businesses close to water channels are already suffering as residents begin evacuation in some areas around Yenogua metropolis. As you can see, the business have been grounded. This is what we've been passing through. And on yearly basis, when it gets to this uh, flood period on September, it is not easy. So we, uh, you can see how we manage. The water got to the knee level, but what do we do as a family man? We still have to struggle with it. That's why you see we are still working inside the water. We're begging the government if there is any way they can assist us about this, we'll be very happy. Since we can't construct wooden bridges, it will be too expensive. So the best way to do is to get something small like this so that we can have access to our houses. We're actually reluctant. We hoped that the water wouldn't be this high. So we're just lying in our houses, not knowing that it will be this huge. Welcoming the move to readjust the school calendar in the state, some residents believe a more robust drainage system will help tackle the flood situation across the state. If they do better drainage, we'll be say, as the flood they come, the, the rain, they fall. The Russian, they go move the water well, come out. Maybe some rooms, water for not enter. So may them do better drainage for us. You can see our small, small cassava away with the ground here now. We don't approve everything finished. This is a U.S. Embassy security advisory that is triggering reactions in the country. When it comes to security information, we are meant to get it from the first class information from uh, our security department. We have more than enough problems in the country that have caused so much threats to the people. You know, bringing this kind of information to the public, I simply believe, will not help the citizens at all. I was supposed not to come to work today, but I had to come because of the alert. No, I'm not coming to work tomorrow because of the security issues. So, I need to sleep You're back at home. Yes, I'm very, very scared. The TSS and police have called for calm among residents, especially in the nation's capital, where the advisory indicated threat of attacks on critical infrastructure. We gather that the top brass of security agencies have been meeting to review the security situation and to ensure that there is no breach in security, at least not in Abuja. The outcome of one of such meetings is Operation Darken Gagawa. 
a counter-terrorism incident simulation exercise meant to hold at the force headquarters and the facility opposite it on Tuesday and Wednesday. The operation is meant to improve interoperability among the different units and formations of the police. The Inspector General Police has announced the immediate commencement of a counter-terrorism incident simulation exercise code named Operation Daki Gagawa will hold within the force headquarters and the police officers' wives' association school opposite the force headquarters of Abuja.